small electric heaters are very useful for heating up a room or part of a room so you can keep the whole house cooler and still be comfortable. But when it comes to directing the heat at me while I'm sitting at the computer, they're not all the same. This little heater, for instance, blows nice and gentle and quiet, but if we look at the heat against the carbon in infrared, we can see it rises very quickly, and if I'm standing even this far away, the heat will have risen above me before it even gets to me. This heater is much better at sending the heat at distance, but it's also quite a bit louder, and if I get in front of it, it doesn't actually feel all that warm because this heater makes quite a bit of wind and that makes it feel cool. I like these oil-filled radiators because sitting next to one feels warm because they radiate quite a lot of the heat. Although right now it's scaled for the heater, so let's get that heater out of here. And now looking at the corner, you can see we're up to uh, 19 degrees where the heater was versus further away on the same piece of cardboard, we're down at 14.9 degrees. And just this table here, this table here, we're down to 13.8. So it warmed up that space near the heater quite a lot. Even uh, these drawers here got warmed up a bit from the heater. Of course, a lot of the heat also goes straight up through convection. So the thing then would be an infrared heater like one of these, although sitting too close to one of those at full power, I get kind of a burning sensation because uh, too close at full power is just too much. But this really big basement room is just impractical to heat up for when I want to do some woodworking. So having a powerful infrared heater beaming at me from a distance is just right. And I've been playing around with different heaters in here as well. So my favorite heater for this was this dish heater with a carbon fiber filament type bulb in it. And I used that quite a lot until the bulb burnt out and uh, looking stuff up online on this one, that's quite common for those. Another heater I liked quite a lot was this patio heater that Max Oak sent me and I did a video on it. And it threw out a lot of infrared. It was very efficient at generating infrared. But uh, after a while, the bulb on that one failed as well. And I think the reason it failed is that I damaged the bulb, banging the heater around trying to demonstrate the tip over protection, which didn't seem to work on that heater. And this is the bulb from that heater and nothing wrong with the insides of the filament, but it was mounted with little pieces of metal with a slot in them right against the part where the tube gets narrow. And of course that is the weakest part of the tube, so banging it around the glass against metal, no wonder it cracked. So while using a computer in the basement, I've mostly been using this infrared heater, which is actually meant for garage ceilings. I put legs on it, and it also has a, a pull cord for uh, turning it on while it's on the ceiling, and the light which I've taken out but uh, running it with just one bulb turned on is 700 watts and that's mostly pretty comfortable although it gets a bit hot after a while so I have to move it away from me. But Suncoast has sent me one of their new types of infrared heater. It uses some carbon nanofilm heating element and what's interesting about this one is it turns on pretty much instantly when I turn it on. So that heating element took no time at all to warm up. And even at full power, none of this heater feels super duper hot. So having it right next to me while using a computer actually is quite comfortable. But then I noticed the lights in my shop flickering. Not sure how well the camera picks that up. So I got the heater and a light plugged into an extension cord to enhance the effect. So this is with the heater off. This is level one, level two, and level 3. Now at half speed to better show the effect. Level 1, level 2, and level 3. So now I've got this heater plugged into an extension cord with a current transformer clamped into it so that my scope can measure the uh, power usage over time. So for reference I've got this heater plugged in. So with a 1300 watt heaters we have a nice sine wave corresponding to a 60 hertz mains and it peaks up over just two divisions both sides. And now with that Suncoast heater at level 3, we get a rather funny looking waveform. Well, this is the weirdest current over time waveform I've ever seen from any device using power. And it appears to be half wave rectifying in one direction and in the other direction, or at least partially. And that puts uh, essentially a DC bias on the line, which is why our current transformer is showing up this bit of a wiggle here. Uh, that's not really a variation in the current. It's just the uh, current transformer doesn't deal that well with essentially DC on the line. So that is level 3. Let's turn down to level 2. 
And this one is just straight on and off. Um, on, off, on, off. It goes on and off about 10 times per second. And that flicker is the most noticeable. And now going down to level 1. Essentially we have one full waveform used and off, a full waveform used, off, a full waveform and a half used, off. It's just weird. But also this is at a low enough frequency that the flicker that causes because of voltage drop in the line is quite visible. And looking at the peaks here, these are actually a fair bit higher than 1300 watts that the other heater was drawing. So uh, if I'm using it in my office and I come into a shop, I can just really see the lights flickering and have to go and turn it off. But even so, I feel bad using it because the lights in the rest of the house, I can just notice seeing them flicker too. And transformers don't like this sort of waveform, so I've got them plugged into my Variac, which is a form of transformer. So I was curious how well this Suncoast heater performs compared to this cheap garage heater, so I've got them both the same distance from some cardboard. And if I look at that with the infrared camera, we can see it's brighter in front of this heater than this one, which is to say I'm getting more infrared out of my garage heater. Now the thing is, the Suncoast right now is set to level 3, full power, kilowatt says 1200 watts. This one's only got one bulb turned on, kilowatt says 700 watts. So if this is producing more infrared with less electricity used, where does the heat go with this one? Well, if I just put my hand above it, I can feel quite a lot of heat coming off convectively, whereas on this one, much less. And looking at this Suncoast heater, it's got this screen in front, which uh, less than half the air of that screen is actually holes. And looking at it in infrared, that screen is not infrared transparent, which is to say half of the infrared that comes off the heating element is absorbed by the screen and then it's just uh, regular heating and most of that is lost through convection. So I emailed those Suncoast guys about the screen absorbing half the infrared and they're like, why don't you just take the screen off? Challenge accepted. And this is my idea of an unboxing video. <laughs> I think I need to avoid the warranty now. I have to say this looks very nicely put together and it's got springs around the edges to keep that front screen under tension. Just looks very solid. I'm just going to unhook those springs to get that screen off. And here's that uh, carbon nanofilm. Quite thin, probably quite vulnerable. Is that material ever thin? And behind it we've got some reflective material and I guess this is just to support the stuff in place. And it also knows there's quite a bit of air space and then this for the air to come out. So basically convectively there's air going either side of this and that keeps the enclosure from getting too hot. Because I did observe that none of this enclosure got really hot, which is very nice about it. And the thickness of this material on the edges is 0.06 millimeters. And where the connection is here, it's 0.13 millimeters. That's compared to a sheet of paper, which is 0.1 millimeters. And when I turn this heater on, I always hear this slight crinkling sort of noise. That's just the uh, nanofilm material expanding because it gets warm and it's plastic. I can see why they put that white obstructive screen in front of it because that heating element, especially while it's heating, is not confidence inspiring the way it looks. And looking at it in infrared, we can see those bars, they're probably connections to the electrical. And the heating element is limited to the area between those bars. So now with the screen removed, this one at 1200 watts makes it warmer in front than this one does at 700 watts, which of course it should. Now with the garage heater at full power drawing 1300 watts, looking at the infrared in front of them, it's definitely warmer now in front of the garage heater, which is drawing 1300 watts, versus 1200 watts for this one. So I'd say these old-fashioned bulbs beat the fancy new nanofilm for efficiency. So I managed to put it back together and it still works. And I do like the idea of a big flat infrared heater that you can put right next to your chair when using the computer. What I don't like is this flimsy heating element inside which requires the screen which then blocks half the infrared. And the other thing I really don't like is how it makes the lights blink. Also, the controls on the bottom is kind of annoying, so I end up using the remote control, which of course I can misplace. 
So if it just had a knob on the top, a physical knob, that would be so much more convenient than fiddling with a remote or some stupid smartphone app to turn the heater on and off. And here's another interesting space heater. This was sent to me by Drio, and it's supposed to be wall-mounted, and the idea is it's a bit off the floor, so I can sort of send the heat downwards so it can go a further distance before it starts to rise. With this next to the cardboard, the infrared camera does show the heat going down, and then I think it kind of disperses here when it goes back up. So at this distance, yeah, I can feel it warm. And now with this heater at its lowest setting, its lowest fan speed and about 850 watts usage, we can see the heat doesn't go quite as far before it rises. So if I stand about here, I feel the warm air. And standing here, not so much. I tried this heater behind the chair in front of my computer and it sent the warm air underneath the chair, which worked out fairly nicely, but then switching back to this infrared heater, with just one bulb turned down, I get more of a sense of warmth with less power used, so I think I'll stick with the infrared heater. But this works fairly nice. The problem is I can't think of a place in the house where there's a wall facing a spot where I'd be uh, hanging out and doing work. So the wall mounted thing, huh, not so good. Maybe I should make a pedestal base for it, which of course is danger of tipping over. But it does use a ceramic heating element, so these ceramic heaters are generally quite safe. So I tried to demonstrate on this one how the power usage drops if you block the airflow. And you can see the power level drop, but pretty soon after that it detects that there is something wrong. It just shuts the power off entirely. On the other drill heater I've tried, uh, it takes much longer for it to trip, so you can really see the power level drop. So this Suncoast heater was sent to me for free, but uh, no money changed hands. You can find that one on Amazon. This Drio heater was also sent to me for free. Uh, this is not sponsored by Drio, but I've been doing videos with them before that are sponsored. This garage heater, um, look for a ceiling mount infrared heater. This is available under quite a few different brands, so easy to find. They're not very expensive. These oil filled heaters are everywhere. Uh, they really should only be used at the uh, lowest settings. I've got a video on that as well. And then of course there's also this type of uh, dish infrared heater. Uh, this is a very low tech one, not one that uses a bulb. Which means it's more reliable, it's not going to burn out on you. But the thing with these dish type heaters is they put out a lot of heat, so for keeping myself warm at the computer, they're a bit too much. And I should emphasize this is not meant for floor use and the pull cord switch on this thing is kind of annoying because you have to pull it twice to set to two, which is with one bulb on and then twice again to turn it off. So I just leave it set to two and just plug it in when I want heat. But at least it doesn't have a freaking smartphone app. <laughs> this one, by the way, also has a remote and an app.